So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Well, well no, what no. Your genetics. I, I, you cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. I'm sorry, it's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male a is a male. Today, we're diving deep into a cultural battle that's been raging across America, a clash of values between conservative commentator Ben Shapiro and the so-called woke Hollywood elite. Whether you agree with him or not, there's no denying that Shapiro has become one of the most influential voices in this debate. So, what makes his views so controversial? How do his traditional values stand up against the modern ideals that dominate Hollywood and much of the liberal movement? Let's break it down. Ben Shapiro is no stranger to controversy. Known for his rapid-fire debates and no-nonsense attitude, Shapiro has made it his mission to defend what he calls traditional American values. These values, rooted in family, faith, and freedom, are, according to Shapiro, under attack from a woke culture that seeks to redefine everything from gender to race to what it means to be American. Let's take a moment to understand what we mean by woke. The term woke originally came from African-American vernacular English, where it meant being aware of social injustices, particularly those related to race. But in recent years, it's taken on a broader meaning, referring to an awareness and advocacy for a range of social issues, including gender equality, gay rights, and environmentalism. It's become a cultural phenomenon, one that Hollywood has fully embraced. But not everyone is on board. The idea that gender is fluid, that race defines you, or that America is fundamentally a racist country, these are ideas that are not only wrong, but dangerous. They tear apart the very fabric of our society. Ben Shapiro stands firmly against what he sees as the excesses of the woke movement. And that has led to some heated debates, especially on topics like gender and race. All right, now that we've set the stage, let's dive into one of the most contentious topics that Ben Shapiro often finds himself in the middle of. Gender. Shapiro has made his stance on gender crystal clear, and it's a stance that has sparked both fierce support and intense backlash. To understand the depth of this debate, we need to explore Shapiro's traditional view on gender roles, how it contrasts with the woke ideology, and why this issue has become such a flashpoint in today's cultural landscape. Okay, so sex and gender are two different concepts, but gender is tied to biology. So one of the big problems that, that you see in sort of the, the argument in favor of trans rights is this notion that gender and sex are completely separable. They are not completely separable. If they are completely separable, then this means that identifying people by their subjective gender really has no relevance as to whether they are a male or a female. Ben Shapiro believes that gender is binary, male and female, and that this distinction is rooted in biological differences that cannot be ignored or redefined. This perspective is what many would call a traditional view of gender, one that has been a foundational belief in most societies throughout history. But in recent years, this view has been challenged by a growing movement that argues gender is not just about biology, but also about identity, expression, and social constructs. Male and female are biological terms. So using terminology like male and female to describe a self-perception self of, of maleness or femaleness is sort of a bizarre way of arguing whether a thing is a man or a woman. So here's my question. It's an argument that my friend Matt Walsh likes to make. What is a woman? Define what a woman is without reference to the word woman, please. Ben stated, biology is not bigotry. The idea that men and women are different is not just some social construct, it's a fact and no amount of ideological pressure can change that fundamental truth. Now, does that mean that people who identify differently shouldn't be treated with respect? Of course not. But it does mean that we shouldn't be forced to pretend that biology isn't real. Shapiro's argument is built around the belief that acknowledging biological differences between men and women is crucial to understanding how society functions. He argues that the push to redefine gender is not only scientifically inaccurate, but also socially harmful. According to Shapiro, by blurring the lines between male and female, we risk destabilizing the roles that he believes are essential for a stable society, such as traditional family structures. On the other side of this debate is the woke perspective, which argues that gender is more than just biological sex. It's about how individuals feel and identify themselves. Advocates of this view argue that society should embrace and respect a spectrum of gender identities, rather than limiting people to the binary categories of male and female. They believe that failing to do so leads to discrimination, particularly against transgender and non-binary individuals. 
Forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male with the exception of some of his sperm cells. I'm sorry, it's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male is a male. You just Someone who is biologically male is a male. The liberals say, gender is not just about what you're assigned at birth. It's about who you are, how you feel, and how you express yourself. Everyone deserves the right to define their own identity without being forced into a box by outdated beliefs. This clash of perspectives has led to some of the most heated and publicized debates involving Ben Shapiro. One of the most famous examples is his appearance on a panel at a 2015 event, where he got into a verbal confrontation with Zoe Tur, a transgender guy, over the issue of gender identity. Shapiro referred to Tur by male pronouns, which led to a tense exchange. This incident highlighted just how polarizing the gender debate has become. For Shapiro, it was about sticking to what he sees as the truth, regardless of how it makes others feel. For Tur and others in the transgender community, it was about demanding respect and recognition of their identity. And this wasn't the last time Shapiro would find himself in the middle of such a debate. Since then, Shapiro has continued to speak out on gender issues, often taking on high-profile debates and discussions. He's been vocal about his opposition to policies that cater to a woke agenda at the expense of what is common sense. This includes debates on topics like whether transgender women should be allowed to compete in women's sports, or whether children should be encouraged to explore gender transition. Shapiro's views have drawn sharp criticism from the left, who argue that his stance is harmful to transgender and non-binary individuals. They accuse him of promoting a viewpoint that invalidates people's lived experiences and contributes to the marginalization of already vulnerable groups. In response, Shapiro argues that his position is not about hate, but about protecting the integrity of societal norms that have stood the test of time. I'm not in favor of government banning people who are adults. Children I'm in favor of banning because now you're talking about somebody who's not capable of consent. Right? All, of our, all of our laws are based on the ability of people to consent. If you're a child, you can't consent. So I'm very much in favor of banning gender transition for kids. I think that it's frankly evil. I think you're making decisions for children who are not capable of making decisions for themselves that are permanent and have long-lasting, significant, and severe impact. This debate over gender touches on deeper philosophical questions about the nature of identity, the role of science in society, and the limits of personal freedom. For Shapiro, the answer is clear. We need to uphold the distinctions between male and female as a way to maintain order and coherence in society. But for those on the other side, it's about breaking free from biology to allow for greater individual freedom and expression. Do we want a society that maintains traditional roles and norms, or one that evolves to accommodate whatever people want to identify as? This is a question that will likely continue to fuel debates and discussions for years to come, with Ben Shapiro remaining one of the most prominent voices on one side of this divide. Let's turn our attention to another major battleground in the culture wars. Hollywood. Hollywood has long been a powerful force in shaping public opinion, from the movies we watch to the messages we internalize about society, culture, and values. But in recent years, there's been a significant shift in the kinds of stories Hollywood tells, with a growing emphasis on woke ideologies. Ben Shapiro, never one to shy away from controversy, has been a vocal critic of what he calls woke Hollywood. So, what exactly does he mean by that? And why does he believe this shift is so dangerous? When we talk about woke Hollywood, we're referring to the way in which the entertainment industry has increasingly embraced and promoted progressive values, values that prioritize social justice, diversity, and inclusion. On the surface, these might seem like positive changes, reflecting a more inclusive and aware society. Hollywood's push towards wokeness isn't just about inclusion, it's about pushing an ideological agenda that undermines traditional values. Shapiro's criticism of Hollywood is rooted in his belief that the entertainment industry is using its influence to reshape societal norms, often in ways that conflict with traditional values. For example, Shapiro frequently criticizes Hollywood's portrayal of gender roles, arguing that many films and TV shows now promote a view of gender as fluid and interchangeable, rather than as a clear biological distinction. It is also the case that if you wish to see the United States thrive in the future, it's going to have to stick to the principles that brought us here. Namely, things like individual freedom, things like objective truth, things like strong social institutions that reinforce important social rules. These are important things. If Take, for instance, the increasing presence of gay characters in mainstream media. While many see this as a positive step towards greater representation, Shapiro sees it as part of a broader effort to normalize what he views as fringe ideas, pushing them into the cultural mainstream. 
He argues that this kind of representation isn't just about reflecting reality, it's about shaping it, encouraging viewers to adopt progressive views on gender and sexuality. So we all have sort of a stake in the image that Hollywood projects of what America is. And when Hollywood skews solely to one side, I think we have a right to be a little angry. And Hollywood is very insular. Hollywood is not just insular. Hollywood does discriminate against conservatives to prevent that alternative viewpoint from coming out. Another key area where Shapiro takes issue with Hollywood is its portrayal of America's history and values. In recent years, there has been a noticeable trend towards depicting the United States in a more critical light focusing on issues like racism, inequality, and injustice. While many see this as a necessary reckoning with the darker aspects of American history, Shapiro views it as an unfair and one-sided narrative that undermines patriotism and national unity. Entertainment was sort of a safe space. And when you went to the office the day after the World Series, you could talk about the World Series without talking politics. When you watched the football game, you could have over your friends on the other side of the political aisle, and you could have fun talking about sports without having to worry about politics. When For movies that depict the struggles of marginalized communities to documentaries that explore the legacies of slavery and segregation, Hollywood has increasingly spotlighted the systemic issues within American society. For progressives, this is an important step towards acknowledging and addressing historical wrongs. But Shapiro argues that these portrayals often ignore the progress that has been made and paint an overly negative picture of the United States. For Shapiro, Hollywood's shift towards wokeness isn't just a cultural change. It's a deliberate attempt to reshape the way Americans think about their country, their values, and themselves. He argues that by constantly pushing progressive messages, Hollywood is trying to reprogram society, moving it away from the traditional values that have long been the foundation of American life. I talk about the evolution of fatherhood on TV, and there is this m amazing evolution of fatherhood that happened for social reasons, where the left started pushing the idea that a woman was liberated if there was no father in the home, right. uh, and you know everything from Murphy Brown to The Simpsons basically portrays fatherhood as useless. Yep. If you are a father, the most famous fathers on TV in the last 30 years have all been doofuses. It's also worth noting that Shapiro contrasts today's Hollywood with the Hollywood of the past. He often points to classic films that upheld traditional values, celebrated American patriotism, and portrayed clear moral distinctions between right and wrong. According to Shapiro, these older films reflected a shared cultural understanding that has since been eroded by the influence of progressive ideology. But Shapiro doesn't just criticize Hollywood. He's also taken steps to create alternatives. In 2020, Shapiro and The Daily Wire entered the entertainment industry, producing and distributing films that reflect conservative values. This move was seen as a direct challenge to Hollywood's dominance and an attempt to offer audiences a different kind of content, one that aligns more closely with traditional American values. Shapiro's foray into filmmaking represents a broader trend among conservatives who feel alienated by Hollywood and are looking to create their own cultural institutions. By producing films, podcasts, and other forms of media, Shapiro and his team hope to counter what they see as the overwhelming influence of woke ideology in entertainment. It's a bold move, and one that highlights just how deep the cultural divide has become. Will Shapiro and others succeed in creating a conservative alternative to Hollywood, or will the influence of woke ideology continue to grow? These are questions that only time will answer, but one thing is certain, Hollywood is no longer just about movies and TV shows. It's a battleground for the soul of America, and Ben Shapiro is right in the thick of it. Shapiro's criticism of woke Hollywood is more than just a critique of the entertainment industry. Whether you agree with him or not, there's no denying that Shapiro's voice is one of the loudest in this ongoing debate.